Today we're going to repair a Gustav Stickley number 319 U-back rocking chair. Stick around, we're jumping right into it. So we've got the antique Gus Stickley 319. It differs very slightly from the one pictured in the Gus catalog. It's got a little U-back or scoop back detail in the crest rail here that I find quite attractive. So there were some structural issues with the chair. We wanted to show you how to bring it back step by step and then get into a restorative wax treatment. Also look for videos on my seat cushion build and the backrest cushion. We made those up in leather. You might be interested in that as well. One of the most significant areas of damage on this rocking chair was the blown out left side rocker. And the damage was such that it actually blew out the whole area where this dowel inserts into the hole. So there was no structural strength of this joint. And so the first repair we had to make was adding this Dutchman. And a Dutchman patch is an old fashioned repair, but it's pretty easy to do as long as you're willing to chisel the defect out so that it forms a right angle. I happen to have some white oak that was conveniently already fumed and so I just cut a scrap of it and I just laid it in there like so and cut it slightly oversized at the bandsaw, glued it in overnight. Then it's just a matter of sanding that repair flush with the existing wood. Another interesting challenge with this repair, since the, the front edge of the hole was completely blown out, we really needed to recreate that hole. So the, the Dutchman's patch comes about halfway through this half inch diameter hole. And the problem with re-drilling that with a Fosner bit, uh, the angle of the hole needs to be not perfectly plumb, but it's about like this. And the problem with drilling this, even with a Fosner bit, is there's no point for the, the tip to land. And so the way we'll get around that is we'll we'll chip out a side of this dowel and insert that temporarily. That will act as a new center point as we re-drill this hole for the dowel of the rocker. You also want to keep track of it as you go that you're creating a flat landing spot for the leg. And that's looking pretty good. I think we can just eyeball this since it'll be a temporary piece. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but from my vantage where I'm drilling, this dowel provides a really good visual reference for the approximate pitch of that angle, the way it needs to come into the rocker. Okay, let's do another color check on our piece of fumed white oak. Um, this is with the dark walnut Watco oil and it uh, looks like it could be a little darker. So we're going to try the black walnut, black walnut Danish oil from Watco. And we'll just try that on a sample board and if I need to I can add a little bit of uh, trans tint dye to darken that even a little further on a second application. Yeah, that looks like it needs to go quite a bit darker to reach the color that we're after there. So let's try a sample of the black walnut with a little bit of uh, Mission Brown trans tint dye. All right, let's see what our new recipe looks like on a little sample board that has been fumed. Oh yeah, that's getting a lot closer. It's got that richness and depth to it that we need. I think uh, maybe just a little bit more trans tint and we'll have it. We'll be able to apply that dye. As we lightly wax the chair to finish restoring it, it should match pretty closely. So 
sometimes an artist brush can get just the right amount of pigment just where you need it. Well, with these old rocking chairs like this antique Gus Stickley, sometimes the more you inspect, the more loose joints you find. This one looks like it'll have to come apart piece by piece. The only thing that'll stay together is the backrest assembly. That's actually pin, mortise, and tenon joints, so it's fine. But these other joints that where the rails meet the legs are actually doweled, and that was surprising to see for a traditional Gus Stickley. And usually we find mortise and tenon with those joints, but as it is, there's three dowels in each joint, so we'll take a look at those and make repairs as needed and do a full glue up. One of them's actually broken here, so that'll give us a chance to drill that out and replace it. One thing I was happy to see is this double dowel connection where the armrests meet the back legs. And we'll work that apart, and that'll glue up real nice. That'll make a solid connection. It not only has the two dowels, but it also has a chiseled out ledge where that armrest can sit on. That's a very sturdy way to build armrests. Here's another look at the doweled armrest joint and we'll just start working that loose. So fortunately the backrest assembly looks really good and here's a closer look at this ledge that was created to receive the armrest and along with the double dowels for extra strength. This particular chair, the dowels go in very, very tight and it's going to just make it too difficult to assemble. So what you can do is make yourself a little flap sander with a quarter inch dowel and just remove any traces of glue from the hole that way. Once everything's fitting right, you can go ahead and glue in any replacement dowels that you had. We just used a self-centering doweling jig to re-drill the broken ones. We only had a couple, luckily. We'll just tap those in place. Every decision you make on what joint to pull apart and what joint to leave together is kind of a calculated risk. This is where the armrest meets the front leg. And we're not gonna take these apart simply because they're cross-doweled through the armrest tenon. And we're gonna reinforce them with a little bit of glue. We'll just inject that with a syringe as things are going together here. So the thought process here is to do the main glue up. All the rails are glued together now with the backrest on. And we even had to glue one rocker on during this main glue up. The reason for that was the dowels kind of kick at an angle like this and it makes it almost impossible to put the rocker on after the fact. That is if the dowels are still in place. This side we were able to get the dowels out so that'll be an easy re-glue after the fact. But since this one dowel remained in place, we felt like we better put that rocker on as part of the main glue up. So the joint where the armrest meets the back leg came together nice and tight. One of the real benefits of that double dowel situation we have there is that this is fitted so well 100 years ago that this notch in the armrest slides right past the leg and fits precisely where it needs to go. I don't even have a clamp across this and it fits perfectly. So then it's just a matter of re-gluing our corner blocks. We labeled them when we took them off to make sure to get them back in in the same orientation. And in this case, we're lucky enough to even have the original screws. It looks like the craftsman had originally tacked these corner blocks in with nails, so we'll just go ahead and reinstall those. Okay, so we'll get glue on all surfaces here and get this last rocker glued on. 
Now this one will be a little easier because it's just a single glue up here. One interesting thing is that the the dowel hole in the front of the rocker is a non-through hole, whereas in the back of the rocker it's actually punched all the way through. So we'll start in the front and get things situated and then we'll add the dowel in the back. And we'll just use some calls to even out the clamping pressure and direct that straight down towards the legs. And we're actually just going to use a spreader here in the middle to bring the dowel hole into alignment. I have to loosen this clamp just a little bit to let it happen. Make sure our dowel is oriented the right way. It's got a little angle to it, so Looks like that will get us closest and we'll add some glue to the dowel and a little more in the hole and we'll complete this rocker glue up. And just one more clamp with very light pressure to close the gap. Here's another look at the clamping calls. These are specifically made for building and repairing rocking chairs. They're just a block of hardwood with a piece of leather stapled to the bottom. It's stapled specifically with the suede side down to get a little bit of traction. And you can just make these in a variety of shapes and sizes so that when you add the clamp, you get a good flat bearing surface and direct the clamping pressure just where you need it. The glue up came out really nice on this chair. All the joinery is really solid now, so we're happy with that part. Now we've got to turn our attention to kind of the cosmetic issues. And this chair is going to get a light wax treatment to restore the original finish, and then we'll be working on upholstery. Now if you stand back far enough and squint your eyes, you might think this upholstery looks decent, but it's actually a lighthouse fabric. Obviously we're going to need to reupholster these in leather. The seat cushion is also pretty lumpy and uneven here, so we'll have to see what's up as we dismantle this and repad the seat deck. Okay, so just time for a little bit of uh, light wool and wax, just to bring the luster and a little finish back up to it. And we'll apply this wax and buff it back, and that'll about conclude things for the restoration of the wood components, and all that'll remain is just the upholstery job. This is real typical on an antique rocking chair, spots where the chair is bumped up against a painted wall. So a little bit of wax and wool can usually buff most of those out without any kind of refinishing. Just spend a minute with them with the wax and wool until the white spots are gone. And you'll be amazed what that does for the look of an old rocker. If this was a finish on a new rocking chair, we'd call it a hand rub finish. It's probably one notch below a satin sheen that the paste wax gives you and that's just right for arts and crafts furniture. Give the paste wax a final buffing with a clean cloth and you're all set. That's all there is to restoring the wood frame of the rocking chair. Okay guys, that's the rundown on the wood frame restoration for the Gustav Stickley 319 rocking chair. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.